I always get questions on Arsenal building. We just got done with Junior Gold, 2019 Junior Gold, and those bowlers were limited to five bowling balls. But building arsenals for people, first thing you look at is you gotta look at the style of the player. Okay, there's three styles of players. There's the Rev, Dominant, There's the matched, and then there is speed, dominant, which could also be termed rev challenged, but since I don't like negative terminology will stick with speed dominant, okay? Let's talk about building six ball arsenals. I like six balls. Because that's two radical three ball totes. I think that's a good thing to do. Okay. Well, the first thing we know is all three categories of ball of players need a spare ball. You need a spare ball right there, okay? So I got five more balls. Rev dominant, you think of the twister, the guy who can really get on it at the bottom of the swing. But the vast majority of rev dominant players in the game today are bowlers that can't throw it as hard as they used to. We're talking to your older pl players as you're getting older. They still have their skill set, but they can't throw it as hard as they used to. So senior citizens are actually rev dominant because of their ball speed. So you've got your rev dominant player, you've got your matched, and then you've got either your speed dominant or you can call your rev challenged. Let's just start in the middle with the matched. Okay, so I gotta put five balls together. If you're matched with the new USBC, Rules coming into effect. I've got two symmetrical balls and three asims. When you start putting arsenals together, you pay more attention to the ball design than you do to the cover stock. Because core shape determines motion, that's eh, a little in conjecture, but it happens to be dead fact. So we got two sims and three asims. I've got a rev dominant player. I'm going to swap that one around. And I'm going to go with three symmetricals and two asims. Because symmetrical balls have smoother, longer transitions. They're continuous, but they have a longer transition. So getting them into the hook phase is sometimes difficult. I go with two and three. And now over here, with your speed dominant player, I might only have one symmetrical. I might have two, but I'll definitely have three asims, maybe four. Okay, so it could, be, let's change this around. So this is two sims and one ASIM, and here's one SIM and four ASIMs, okay? So that's what we're going to do, and we're going to look at what we're going to do with layouts. Picking the right ball is the most important thing, because when you're doing ball motion, it is ball selection, layout, and then surface. That's the way we do it. So finding a ball that's designed to do what you want it to do is the best way to do it. Okay, if I've got a rev dominant player and I'm doing three symmetricals, I'm going to do two with a normal layout one short pin. Short pin means the pin is less than two and a half inches from your positive axis point. That creates the ability to go down the outside when they get dried out and to get a smoother motion off the spot. So those are your three sims. 
Now I got two ASIMs I got to put in here. And it's getting cluttered, but we'll do it all. Two ASIMs. We're going to do one with the PSA in the thumb. and one with the PSA towards the VAL. Okay? So, three symmetricals. Two with your normal drillings, the standard drillings we like to use, one short pin in case he's got to get it down the lane. The two ASIMs, one with the PSA in the thumb, which will give you your sharpest break point, and one with the PSA on the VAL, so that's going to ro roll up and give you a little bit more control at the breakpoint, but still give you the hook you need. So there's a lot there for your rev dominant player. Matched player. Don't need the short sim, don't need the short pin in the symmetricals. So we have two layouts that are in more in the normal range, which would be pins above the fingers and slightly closer to the VAL or slightly we could have one in here and then we could do one with the pin a little closer to the VAL which would create a sharper break point. So we've got our two symmetricals. Okay, we got three ASIMs. Okay, we got two pin up and one pin down. Let me change that right here. Fix that here. Pin down. I don't do pin downs with symmetrical balls because now that they're eliminating balance holes, don't get caught in that trap because you're going to leave a whole lot of corner pins with that ball. One of the, one of the favorite layouts that people have is pin down, hold down. Got a little problem there. We ain't got a hole we can put down anymore. So I'd stay away with symmetrical balls. I'd stay away with, stay away from the pin downs. Three ASIMs, two pin up, one pin down, two symmetricals, one with a little stronger pin location, and one more moderate pin location. Now, speed dominant players. Okay, I'm going to do a max flare symmetrical. Okay, and then I'm going to do a more controllable pin up symmetrical. More control. Now we're talking layout with the pin more over here instead of over there. So that's what we got with our two symmetricals. With our three A sims, or we're going to do one sim, if we're really speed dominant, we're going to do a max flare and then we're going to go to the four A sims. Now with the A sims, on the speed dominant player, I'm going to do one, I'm going to do three, three of them minimum, let's look at them. Okay, PSA positions matter. One with the PSA in the thumb and the pin over there for your maximum flare position. One with the PSA just right of the thumb. Again, pin somewhere in this area here. And then the third one, I'll put the PSA all the way over on the VAL. Because this one will read the pattern the soonest. This one will be a medium read. This one will read it the latest the hard, latest and hardest. So we have got two sims, three A sims. I may get rid of one symmetrical and put a fourth asymmetrical in there, one with a little more surface than the other. But if they're speed dominant, you're going to look at these layouts over here that have the PSAs towards the VAL. That covers it. Now that may have sounded like a lot, 
But if you go through it, you'll see that there's different looks for different folks. Now, taking into account your oil patterns, short, medium, and long is another thing they talk about. Well, I like a lot of adjusting for short, medium, and long by adjusting the surface on the ball. Because for a bowling ball to strike, it has to slow down. But you don't know how much surface is the right amount until you throw a couple of balls. I was at Junior Gold last week, and they had set, they had a lot of patterns with the speed bump at the end of the pattern. Guys who make a living at this game understand speed bumps. And when you've got that, the ball doesn't read the back of the lane. So keeping in mind that we use surface to more to accommodate the length of the pattern and use the ball choices and the layouts in order to accommodate the style of the player. I think if you stick to that system and that advice there, you're going to be right a whole large percentage of the time, a lot more than you normally are. By the way, thank you for listening to Mo Monday. This should cover you on your arsenal building, keeping in mind we use selection of ball and layout to do most of the work, and we adjust for the length of the pattern by the surface we choose. Keep hanging out and keep stopping in and seeing us. We'll have more stuff for you every week.